This episode is sponsored by my Patreon page. Hello there. If you enjoy my content, please take a moment to consider subscribing to my Patreon. Your generosity is very much appreciated and helps me to continue making content. As a way of saying thanks, Patreon subscribers get access to perks such as early access to episodes before they premiere on YouTube, exclusive content, the ability to vote and help decide on future content, access to my new Discord community, your name in the thank you section in every video, and more. Thanks again to everyone for your awesome support. Take care and enjoy the video. Yahoo! Welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we had a little bit of a snafu in our process of breeding for a usable drag, a usable salamence. And today we shall strive to recover from that snafu and go beyond. You'll notice I took a little bit of time to name some of the Pokemon. This is a common technique, so... You know, this Naive Ditto has perfect special attack. This Spagon has perfect speed, so if I breed these two... There is a small possibility that I can get a Bagon with perfect special attack and speed to replace this Spagon. Also learned that this one that I was wondering about, it has perfect HP and attack stats, and the special attack stat is 30, so it's one point off from perfect. So this could be very useful. We're going to strive to replace our Naive Ditto with two per- or Naive Bagon with two perfect stats. So to that end... Since we're using a Naive Ditto as parent, as a mother, we can use the Everstone technique. We don't really care about this Bagon. We can go ahead and let it have all of its moves erased. Because any Bagon with a perfect speed stat can replace that one. And we're going to get a nice selection of Bagon with perfect speed stats, hopefully, through this breeding process. So we are back on the path again. Cycling up and down and up and down. I think that we should be able to get that double flawless in a Sort of decent amount of time, number of eggs. I'm definitely not taking the Bagon out of the daycare, or any Pokemon out of the daycare, until we have the double flawless. Ideally, then I can breed that. Same 
I don't like each other very much. It's just the low roll. We're spawning eggs. I'm gonna try to power through this as much as possible. So we can get ourselves back on track. Breeding a few Pokemon over just the three. Because, particularly for the Battle Pyramid, I might need to swap team members around. The good thing that I am doing that for. Yeah, I am doing that Nuzlocke playthrough of Leaf Green. They generally do that on stream, so... But I think I did record two traditional style videos. So I might upload those because those are the next parts of the journey, but... Mostly it's done through streaming. My luck in a Nuzlocke has been, you know, middle of the road. I had a few... few encounters that were... less than ideal. I think I'm on a good pace to possibly beat the game. But I'm only at about the midway point, so I'm speaking too soon. Either way, if I complete the Nuzlocke challenge or not, whether I win or lose on the Nuzlocke challenge, I can complete the game after that just to get access to more Pokemon that I can use. Emeralds. Ideally. There aren't too many Pokemon that I want to import from Fire Red and Leaf Green, but having the option is better than not having the option. will all be naive, I can use my estimation model that I have. I know that I'm looking for a 10 in special attack and the 12 in speed.
I think this was a good decision. To go through the entire breeding process. For a single Pokemon. Kind of show off what the time investment is like. In the process. I think it is. I mean, it's not an essential experience. Unless you are a competitive player or breeder. I think if you are and you started with games like Sword and Shield. Then it's probably a good idea to come back to Generation 3 and just go through the process of breeding out a single competitive, usable competitive Pokemon just to get a feel for what it's like. You get a feel for the fundamentals that have remained unchanged, as well as the things that used to be fundamentals that have been adjusted, modified, and changed, and it helps to build a better overall understanding of the Pokemon breeding process and what goes into compete creating a competitive Pokemon. Maybe it's just me that thinks that way, but... I think it's a good way of thinking. More understanding can't hurt you. And now we have three, four eggs. Five eggs. We are back at a surplus. Which is good to have. We need as many eggs as possible when we're hunting for the double flawless here. This is such a big process. I think we will have some eggs between episodes. Not hatching between episodes ideally, but ending episodes with unhatched eggs left in my party. Because we are quickly approaching that stage where we need Lots and lots of eggs. So we are going to be pushing for a nice box full of eggs, maybe for the big on. And then hopefully some of those eggs will be the double flawless we're looking for, ideally a male and a female would be great because a female can be used and then we won't need Ditto. A female double flawless would mean... Yep, but we don't need Ditto. But now I'm curious, can Ditto take the place of the father? Like, if you have a female with an Everstone and a Ditto, the child should inherit the nature from the mother and still inherit the IVs from the Ditto. Oh yeah, but not the moves, that's the thing. 
Dilla is the father, he can't pass down moves, and the mother can't pass down moves, period, so we lose out on the egg moves. So, using a female parent does add another step. So we'll need a father with a perfect attack stat if we have a female with the perfect speed and special attack. But this just kind of shows you what the process is. By the end of the process, if you're breeding for natures and moves, you're going to end up with a male that is very close to your target and a female that is very close to your target. And you will breed those together and eventually you'll get whatever your target is. Okay, that 50-50 got us. I don't know what your stats are. So our surplus continues. that surplus. Yes, please. And now here's where we see what our luck is. If the surplus will continue to grow or if it will kind of hold steady. Either way, we're going to end this episode with a lot of eggs. And a few hatched bagon. I always thought that bagon was a great design for a great evolutionary line. One of those lines that goes through a sort of process that sort of marries the butterfly, sort of goes into a cocoon phase when it becomes shell down, and then a butterfly phase when it becomes salamence. Maybe the special attack is good, and maybe the HP is good. Everything else says no. If we got a random perfect HP, that would be interesting. Let's just draw the egg. 
because we're not at a surplus right now. Yep. Now watch him step forward in a few rotations here. I think it's a pretty nice design. It's a dragon that goes through a sort of butterfly-like metamorphosis. Interesting. Big on that whole storyline about wanting to fly and eventually getting to that point where it can fly. As long as it doesn't give up. It's a motivational Pokemon that turns into a sort of doom dragon, as it were. Flying menace to society. Flygon sort of, I mean, probably cross between Flygon and Salamence set the stage for what would be Garchomp. As the monster that it is. Stats are not promising at all on this one. The speed is no good. Maybe the special attack is good, but that's about to it. I think that took care of the surplus. Now we are back at five eggs. Attack is good. Ooh, oh, come on. I 
Okay, I think we're going to stop here. So in the next episode, we are going to pick up where we left off with these eggs. Hatching and hoping we can get to that double flawless. And then move forward. Hopefully. So thank you for watching. Please like and comment and subscribe. Very much appreciate your comments and your subscriptions and support as I'm going through this process. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye!